you will encounter some form of neurocognitive science that has been weaponized not only in your military career but in your personal and professional lives. It is valid, valuable, and already an operational play. The brain is the current and future battle space. What's new about this is the in-close nature of this. Increasingly, we're not seeing these things as weapons of mass destruction against gross aspects of the population. More specifically, perhaps, might be targeting individuals on a level that allows either direct attribution or covert engagement with non-attribution. If we talk about what brain science is, let me just give you a little bit of brief background on this field that is now called neuroscience. As a titular field, as a named field, neuroscience has only been in existence for 40 years. I know that because I've been a neuroscientist for about 38 of those 40 years. Increasingly, it is becoming an international, multinational, global, and independently exercised event and endeavor which increases the capability of the brain sciences to develop not only new theories, but ever more sophisticated tools. So, how then can we use these elements as weapons, means of contending against others? Formal definition of a weapon, probably the one that you've heard about most recently, most contemporaneously in, in the literature, is the possibility to use some form of directed energy to affect physiology peripherally and also to affect the physiology and health of the brain. Case in point here, U.S. Embassy personnel in Havana, and possibly in China. And then, of course, you also have the things that are a little bit more traditional. If we talk about things that can be operable in the biochemical space, we ordinarily talk about drugs, bugs, toxins, and ever more, we're considering devices. I can disrupt an individual from the level of their cell to their system, and disrupt individuals on a variety of levels, from individuals all the way up to the social fabric. Target a specific individual, change or eliminate that individual with very little attribution and trace and be able to leave prior to any attribution. Drugs can be exceedingly specific and as I'll show you in a moment can be very, very much used to individualize weaponology in terms of what we call precision pathology or precision effect. And by affecting the way that brain is built and the way it functions, influence in ways that are kinetic and non-kinetic, the attitudes, beliefs, thoughts, emotions, activities. Look at the power that understanding tools techniques the brain sciences afford. One of the newest developments is that nanoparticulate matter can be stabilized for distribution. If you're not aware of what nanoparticulate matter is, it's that matter which exists on a scale of well, 1 times 10 to the minus 9th. Very, very small. Smaller than a cell. And we can manufacture materials that have discrete properties that can be controlled by virtue of bioengineering and their physical chemistry. I can create small robotic units, controllable robotic units at the nanoscale, and that these two can be aerosolized to create a nanoswarm of biopenetrable materials that you cannot see, that can penetrate all but the most robust biochemical filters, that are able to integrate themselves through a variety of membranes, mucous membranes, and wherever, mouth, nose, ears, eyes, can be then uptaken into the vascular system to create clumping, can affect the vascular system of the brain or can directly diffuse into the brain space, and these can be weaponized. And they can be done in such a level that their presence is almost impossible to detect, and as such, the attribution becomes exceedingly difficult to demonstrate. We've come to the precarious position of opening the proverbial can of worms of if, how, in what ways, to what extent, and when these techniques and technologies will be used in weaponized intelligence and national security agenda. Are civilian ethics even viable any longer? And if we engage military ethics, what military ethical principles will we engage? The brain is the current and future battle space. This technology can also be used to manipulate the emotions of the target. It can induce fear, love, hate. It can cause you to be nervous, it can cause you to be confident. It can cause you to be depressed, it can cause you to be happy. It can cause you to feel any fucking emotion at any time by artificially inducing them. This technology can be used to beam images and even motion pictures into one's brain. Images and motion pictures that are so realistic that you think you're actually watching a movie or seeing something in reality. It's like a virtual, virtual reality 3D rendering that takes place within the target's mind. Let's imagine that we could take our brain out of our body and keep it alive in a glass box. 
Then let's get a computer filled with information related to a particular setting, such as image, sound, and smell. We'll connect this computer to the brain with electrodes and send the pre-recorded data to the brain. As our brain receives these signals, it will see and live the setting that the computer is transmitting. We could also send signals to the brain from this computer about our own image. For example, we could send the electrical information, such as the sight, hearing, and touch, that we would experience while sitting at a desk. Our brain would perceive that we were a businessman sitting in his office. This imaginary world would continue as long as the information kept coming from the computer, and we would never realize that we were actually a brain sitting in a glass box.